make or break time for 5-1, 34-year-old, unranked Alex Pereira taking on a top-ranked caliber, number four, Sean Strickland in this middleweight division. And since his horrific motorcycle accident that took him out of commission for some time, Sean Strickland pulled a classic king of the cage. What does that mean? Well, he used to be the king of the cage middleweight champ, came into the UFC, had a foray there, moved down to 170, and you thought that was his home until that motorcycle accident. 185, he's 5-0 and oh since then. He has some finishes mixed in there. He's looked absolutely amazing in the division. He just had a couple of big-time fights. Jack Hermanson, Uriah Hall, five-round fights, and he won those fights handily. And now he's going to be taking on an interesting test in Pereira. And I open it up saying it's make or break time because if Pereira loses this fight, I don't know what the hell the promotion does with him because then all of a sudden it's not like, oh, well, you're going to fight Adesanya tomorrow. You might never fight him ever again, which, of course, they did fight in kickboxing, Pereira knocking out at us. I think that's a really good point to bring up, though, and I'm even curious to see what if Pereira wins and so does Cannoneer. Like, it feels like every time we talk about Alex Pereira and what's he going to do next, it's, hey, building towards Israel, building towards Israel. So I'm very curious to see, like, where does his story go if there is no Israel to build towards? Because for the majority of really hyped up prospects, it's, hey, beat the 11th ranked guy, then beat the 7th ranked guy, then he'll get a top five opponent and if you beat them we'll talk about a title shot but it is very curious that ever since Pereira got signed to the UFC the conversation has only been around him potentially fighting Adesanya more so than any of his opponents up until this uh, point. Now his last time out and a lot of people are going to say well Bruno Silva bleh, Andre Smihaly is bleh Bruno Silva is a motherfucker, and the guy was the middleweight champ over with M1 Global. You can take that for what it's worth. He had a little bit of a USADA issue for a couple of years, but Bruno Silva. Alexander Romanov who? Good at grappling, good at jiu-jitsu, great at power punching, and they had a heck of a fight. And Alex Pereira, when the fight was standing and he wasn't clenched up or taken down, looked absolutely amazing. And same thing goes for his fight against Mikhailidis. Mikhailidis had a ton of success in the first round. He kind of pitter patter a little bit with his kickboxing, worked in his takedowns, and then Pereira was able to light him up with a flying knee in the second round. But I look at it for Alex Pereira, and Mikhailidis was only able to go 2 of 7 on his takedown attempts, and Bruno Silva was only able to go 2 of 8. And Pereira beat Bruno Silva... Three judges, 30-27 on each of their scorecards. So for Pereira, he's been able to grapple defensively enough, because you're never going to see him offensively grapple, from the school of Teixeira MMA and Fitness out of their Connecticut, you know, there. But I know Glover's not the champ anymore, and you might just want to, like, step aside and dismiss him. But what he's done there with that team is very impressive. It's just like James Krause. See the best UFC fighter ever? No, he's very successful, but his gym's very successful as well. For Pereira... To mix it up. And you got to consider this too. Because I'm saying, oh, depths and despair, 5-1 and one in MMA. 33-7 and seven in kickboxing, 21 knockouts. And he was a former glory middleweight and light heavyweight champ. Light heavyweight as recent as last year in 2021, he was their champ. So he's made the transition back over to MMA because he did have an MMA fight years ago. Very, very well, and he's looked very good in these fights. And I do like his takedown defense, because it's not just defensively oriented from on the feet. If he does get taken down, he's a very strong athlete for the size of him. I know he's got like a thin build to him. He doesn't look like the biggest guy in the world, but you can tell how naturally strong he is. Because at 6'4", at the middleweight division, he towers over his opposition. It is kind of like watching a Kevin Durant play basketball, because he's sort of, he's hunched over a little bit. Like, Pereira does things wrong, but his athleticism can make them right and I think it is very interesting the matchmaking that they've done with Pereira up until this point because we talked about this a lot like Mikhail Litas, oddly enough stylistically might have been his toughest fight a guy who's gonna wrestle you more than anything really and a guy who's really gonna try to wear on your gas tank and make it an ugly fight whereas with Souza he's gonna or Silva sorry he's gonna stand on the feet with you a little bit more he'll play your game a little bit so I do like how they've matched Pereira up uh in the UFC up until this point but this fight against Sean Strickland is an odd one because I think Pereira is a pure kickboxer to where he will struggle against like a Marvin Vittori who's just so dedicated to the takedown that they don't really care about throwing punches and I know Vittori is a good striker at this stage of his career but you know what his mindset is I'm gonna get close to you I'm gonna get on top of you and I'm gonna beat you into the ground with my ground and pound I think Pereira with his striking style would really struggle against a guy like Vittori because he does jump into some of his strikes and he will uh kind of jump into the pocket for lack of a better term hide your ciabatta 
Oh, hide your Chibata. But the thing is, with Pereira, he really only needs one. And I know people say this all the time. Oh, Francis just needs one. The difference is, some people are only a right-hand puncher, for instance. Uh, Deontay Wilder comes to mind, where, yes, he's a crazy knockout artist, but his main tool is that straight right, and then he gets wild afterwards. Pereira has knockout power, but it's not just uh, associated with one tool. He can knock out with his left leg, his right leg, elbows, punches. It doesn't matter where the punch is coming from or where the strike's coming from. It has the potential to knock you out behind it. And I'm kind of curious as to why they didn't make this fight a five-round fight, and this is why. We've seen it happen. It's not common, especially for them to do non-title fights on pay-per-view main cards. It's just happened a couple times. Lawler Diaz. But they are building Pereira up to fight for a UFC title, and normally you do see a fighter fight in a fight night main event or have some really high profile fights on their way up to the title shot that gets them ready for that kind of atmosphere. I am a little surprised they didn't end up making this fight a 25 minute fight because Sean Strickland's been in that atmosphere before. It's not like we have to question the cardio of Sean Strickland whether or not the fight's just going to look really ugly at that point. And B, it would help us learn a lot more about Alex Pereira because let's say he does have a close fight with Strickland in the first three rounds. He looks tired in the fourth. And let's say he can stop Sean Strickland in like the fourth or fifth round. That's going to make a lot of people who were maybe just a little bit curious in this kickboxing star fighting Israel Adesanya to oh my goodness Alex Pereira the guy who knocked out Israel, Israel Adesanya has a chance to do it again so that's the only thing I will say I did kind of expect this to be a five round main event or a five round co-main event after they had mentioned that this is a title eliminator but I am curious to get your thoughts on that like for Sean Strickland what do you think his mindset is going into this fight because he has he himself hasn't fought a lot of the upper echelon guys but he could also kind of jump that Q and get into a title shot just like that. Like, if you like my favorite saying when you're watching any of the UFC broadcasts, it's you gotta watch DC and RC, a couple of Louisiana boys chopping it up about the sport they love. They never change the line. It's always the same. Sean Strickland, here's the line. I'll preface it with this. He always used to be a California guy and he always used to be, whether it was Team Quest, which I get it up north, but there's one in California, or Kings MMA. Since the middleweight move, he's been chopping it up at every damn gym across the country. Syndicate, around. Extreme Couture, American Top Team, he's been everywhere. And a lot of people credit his success to, okay, his boxing is great. When he's in the pocket, it's great. My big critique is he's squared up, like he's really squared up. I don't understand why guys don't have success kicking his leg. You know why? You know why, Craig? It's because as Fun. soon as somebody goes to land that kick, he throws volume with power behind it. Guys respect his power and they back off. Look at Jack Hermanson. Jacker Manson sometimes gets lost when he meets volume. He looked completely lost when he took the volume of Sean Strickland. That was Strickland's last fight a few months ago, four months and a week ago. When he took on Uriah Hall, again, 50-44, 50-45, 49-46. Uriah Hall couldn't get started. Christoph Jaka was on the back foot the whole fight. Couldn't figure it out. Brendan Allen got finished in that one. And then the fight against Jack Marshman, where this all kicked off about a year and a half ago. In the third round, he's toying with him. He's drawn with him, telling him to throw down. He looked like a middleweight Max Holloway in that fight. He really did look amazing. And I know Jack Marshman had a rough go in the UFC. But regardless of it, Sean Strickland's looked very, very good in these fights. So I look at the odds. Strickland open to minus 175. Minus 103 right now on best fight odds. Alex Pereira, unranked against the number four middleweight. Open to plus 150, minus 122. Matt, Sean Strickland in the UFC is 12-3. and three. Those three losses, Santiago Ponzinibbio, Camaro Usman, who had wrestled him, and dropped him on the feet, though. Eliseo Zaleski dos Santos, who put him on a poster. Like, it's probably in somebody's house. The spinning wheel kick. It's definitely in Eliseo's house, and it's probably in a dance Eliseo studio. Eliseo has, like, an NFT of just him, like, spinning and knocking him out. It's definitely in a Capoeira dance studio somewhere. Matt, we have a look at the fan vote. 50%. Wow. 894 total votes, so split him with a hair. 75% of the fans who have Strickland have to win by decision. 68% of the fans who have Pereira have to win by knockout. So Matt, I seem to come from that same school of thought. Strickland wins the decision. Pereira knocks him out. What do you say? Pereira has an amazing chin. I just feel like we should say yeah. that. We see a lot of kickboxers come over and almost be a little overconfident with their level of striking. I don't think Pereira is in that camp whatsoever. Like, he fought one of the best non-ranked fighters in the UFC his last time out and ate some bombs from him, too. Yep. And, like, Silva's one of the more heavy-handed guys there is out there. And he was able to eat some really big shots from him, rally late in that fight, and did a lot of the things that you like out of a fighter that you're expecting to make a run towards the top of the division. I think the UFC strategically match made this. No way. As good as any fight. Because that's the thing. Pereira is, of course, he's a 10 out of 10 in striking. But I think, okay, 
Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira are both, let's just say, the same level of striker, if you will. Like, no one's going to go out there and just purely outstrike them on the outside. The difference is, Izzy moves with his feet playing it flat on the ground for the most part, so it does help him with his takedown defense, and he has refined his process slightly throughout his almost 20 uh, MMA fights now. Whereas, for Pereira, he still does have some of those tendencies to jump into the pocket, which is something you do when you don't have to worry about the takedown. So, against Sean Strickland, who also gets all of his work done in the pocket, I do think Pereira will be able to win this fight, but I'm very curious to see what they do with Pereira. What if he doesn't have an impressive win this time out? Dana White's sitting back like, hey, we want him in there with another guy. Like, maybe you do the Whitaker fight, but... Costa. Costa would be a really good one now that I think about it. It's a great example. It's just, I, I still find this very weird how everything Pereira does is tied to this guy who has the title. Whereas for Adesanya, it doesn't really feel like Pereira is a part of his story. But everything about Pereira's story is him getting to the Adesanya fight. The pick is Alex Pereira. If you fight him in the pocket, you're probably going to go home asleep. Yeah, it's a really, really odd one. You love the volume out of Sean Strickland. I know he did win a split decision last time out against Jack Hermanson. Honestly, I didn't hear a ton of arguments for Hermanson no. winning that fight, so it is what it is. But against Uriah Hall, he bulldozed him. The biggest thing, if you do look at it for Sean Strickland, even against Brennan Allen, he was able to take him down. It's facts that he can mix in his wrestling when he needs to. Pereira's not an easy guy to take down. Great use of underhooks when he gets back up against the cage. He's a tall guy that can use his frame well. He has a great base that he extends out like... He's not just a 5 and one fighter. Obviously, I think people are going to be mad at this prediction, though. I feel like a lot of people out there are going to be like, hey, Sean Strickland with the experience. I can't believe you guys are picking the hype job. But, like, Sean Strickland gets all of his uh, positives done in the pocket. Alex Pereira strikes like there's a thunderstorm outside your window. It just, it's not a what, great recipe. dog that's afraid of it? Well, no, it just sounds constantly. It sounds like two wooden bats are hitting each other when Alex Pereira lands anything. Who was the poor guy who fought Pereira in his fight after Glory, but before he came to the UFC? You can find it on top. LFA zone. It was in LFA. It was awful. They matched Pereira up with a guy who had very limited experience, too. I Thomas say, Powell, who's 4-4. Four four. Thomas Powell, God love you wherever you are. He's I, all over Twitter. I see him there a lot. Thank God he's doing well nowadays, because he fought Alex Pereira in one of the scariest fights I've ever seen in my life. It's like, we have the greatest kickboxer of all time. I guess the guy who's, what, well, I guess four, four, four and three at the, at the time. And then, yeah, Pereira hits him with a left hook that straight up sounds like a crack of thunder or someone hit a whip inside the cage. Like, Pereira has fight-changing power if he lands, and Sean Strickland has good numbers, but you only really come down to the numbers if it goes to the decision. I expect Pereira to win by stoppage. I think Pereira's going to win too, and this is weird, kind of, you know, coming into this one, thinking about it, Sean Strickland, fourth rank, mixed in the wrestling, training at Syndicate, Couture, American Top Team, I'm going to wrestle, which is great because he can out-wrestle strikers. He out-wrestled Uriah Hall. He's out-wrestled guys in the past. He was able to take down Brendan Allen. I, I think Alex Pereira's going to win. I Like, it's... It's completely outside of the realm of the way that Craig Allen picks fights. I always go experience takedown versus guys who just have power. But I think Alex Purr is going get to get it done, and it sounds weird to me. So let me know in the comments section who you have in this matchup. But both of us kind of scratching our heads, and we're going with a guy who's, what, a few days away from turning 35 and Alex Pereira to get the win. I can't wait for this fight, and if you really want to see us either take an L or a big W, join in the Fight Night Picks sidekick. We're going to be live for the main card on YouTube. We're going to be chatting with you, so if we look like donkeys, you can see it there. Two big title fights up at the top that you're not going to want to miss. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, as we always say. Let's, let's get, get into it. it.